Hello everybody, I am Elio, and let's continue playing Pokemon White, and welcome to a guide to the Abyssal Ruins, the diving area of Undella Bay, an area just east of Undella Town. Uh, so I'm going to be surfing on a duck, makes sense to me, and you simply press A when you're on top of one of these dark patches of water, and you'll dive under. Something you should know right away before you enter the Abyssal Ruins is you need a Pokemon with Surf, obviously. A Pokemon with Dive, again, obviously. A Pokemon with Flash, and a Pokemon with Strength. Not that they have to all be the same Pokemon that knows all of those moves, but that would be quite an accomplishment if that was the case. So, a sound reverberates, and that's your hint telling you that you've got a step limit in here, and you've got a limited amount of steps to get what you can and get to the end of the ruins. You can't all do this in one visit, obviously. But there are plates down here which boost the power of certain types of moves. For example, the Zap Plate powers up electric type moves, and it changes the type of Arceus depending on the plate as well. A Pokemon called Arceus from Generation 4. You also find various pieces of treasure down here which will be uh, have the prefix Relic, so you'll know their treasure and you can sell them to a maniac later. So there's a Flame Plate for powering up fire type moves. Also, I am... actually this is going to be a plate... yeah, a dread plate for powering up dark type moves. Uh, you should know that I'm uh, using some maps and I'm going to provide those in the, in the description. I'm not doing this from memory because this place is really big and <laughs> not uh, simple enough for me to pull up by memory. Iron plate for powering up steel type moves. And Relic Silver, a different, another type of treasure. We're first exploring the western uh, dive site, if you're following along. We're just above uh, the entrance here, we're about the middle. So uh, on this dive, I'm going to be exploring the west side of the dive, uh, of the ruins, or at least of this floor, uh, which I've already done, and the sort of central area. So I've got uh, a couple of other treasures around there. I think a relic statue too, that's worth a lot. And a relic vase, that's also worth a lot. And so uh, this pillar here is our way to the next floor. There are four floors to this place. Uh, counting a rather small fourth floor, but we'll get to that later. And if you, uh, as I said, this place is on a step limit. And if you take too many steps... Nah, I wasn't able to get that much treasure. When you uh, take, uh, when you step loaded up, you'll be forced out. But that's fine because I wanted to get out anyway. Wow, look at all this stuff! It's gonna, it's gonna be quite a task finding my super repels in all this trash. Well, it's not trash at all. You're gonna be able to sell all this uh, relic treasure for a lot of money. And of course, these type plates aren't a bad thing either. And so we dive in the northern entrance. Yeah, this little segment here where you're just diving down, I'm, I'm, uh, you move yourself, but I'm going to skip those later. I'm going to skip, skip those from now on. Alright, moving on. Now we're in the northern part of the first floor. First we found a stone plate, which increases the power of rock-type moves. And there, up, up, and by this pink pillar here. Relic Copper. Those pink pillars, I used to think, uh, I used to believe, or at least I used to be, I've been told that those were the way to the second floor, but they're not. And I'll tell you the way to the second floor later, when I found all the treasure on this floor. Also a side note, you don't need to collect all the treasure on a floor to be able to advance. Just in case you were wondering that. So you can go straight, if you want to head straight to the last floor and get the treasure there, then you feel free to do that, but... I'm going to collect every piece of treasure on this floor because it wouldn't be a good guide if I didn't. So we're going to go down, up, right, and around here somewhere. In this patch of four, I uh, kind of unnecessary, found an insect plate which obviously powers up bug type moves. Kind of obvious. And I think we can get one last piece of treasure or one last plate down here, the one I was trying to get earlier. A dull sound echoed. Yes, you get warning messages uh, free. Uh, warnings, uh, you, yeah. 
Not counting the force, uh, mind plate, by the way. <laughs> Confused. A mind plate which powers up psychic type moves. And swim down. I, I, I thought I not got an item there. Okay. I'll see you at the top again. Yes, you can work your back, back to the top, but I got forced out. <laughs> I thought there were several things that I got interrupted saying there. Oh well. Now we're going to go down the eastern dark patch. With my decklet. Alright. We've surfed down and the sound reverberates. Not counting that force switch at the beginning, you have three warnings. And I'll tell you when they come up. Tell you what they each are when they come up. Anyways, go up here to this vault like structure. Again, we're on the eastern uh, side of the map if you're following along. Relic Silver. And here's the first warning a dull sound came from far away. You get three warnings, and then the fourth message uh, it's a torrent of water forces you out. And the sky plate is there on the second prong for uh, which powers up flying type moves. And here's a relic copper for more money. Inside a pink pillar. And just a couple more plates here, and then I think we'll be done. Here is an earth plate, which increases the power of ground type moves. And down here is a toxic plate. I feel like I said that these were the last treasures in the lo on the floor, but they're not, of course. And toxic plate increases the power of poison type moves. So from here, you can actually uh, find your own way out, and it can can save a bit of time. A dull sound decoed is the second warning message. They give you enough time. Uh, they give you a bit of leeway to getting to the last floor. Don't worry, There's some, uh, a leeway of something like a hundred steps, I'd reckon. I don't know exactly. I haven't counted it. <laughs> so now we're back at the top, and uh, don't forget to put your super repels up each time you go to a new spot. Otherwise, well, Pokemon will be bothering you, and that won't be fun. Now we're going to take the final, the Southern Dive Hall. Now we are down at the bottom, click the sound reverberates, blah blah blah. And this is probably the snake most, uh, snake like most entrance of them all, just look up, right, down, up, up, up. <laughs> anyways, yeah, there's an item there, but I'm following a path of my own here. What, you think I'm normal or something? Yes, the dull sound came far away. Seriously, just coming in here sets off a chain reaction that just causes a torrent of water to blast you out. <laughs> At least that's what it seems like. And we got a fist plate, which increases the power of fighting type moves, which is right there in the overall bottom left corner of the map. Of the floor of the map, that is. The floors get smaller as you go up, so it is kind of like a pyramid, which is pretty interesting. I just realized that. Relic copper here, more treasure. And over here is a spooky plate, which increases the power of dark type moves. Yeah, you'd think something like dread plate would be ghost, but no, that's uh, that's dark. They have to have spooky for the ghost types. More treasure here, and not many tre uh, not many items left. I like the uh, shaking effects on the camera too. While you're down here, icicle plate for increasing the power of ice type moves, and down here. Is one final plate and the last item on the floor a meadow plate which increases the power of grass type moves. And now I'm gonna uh, find my way out of here. Down here and around the snake like passage. So just seeing the character breathe there, I remember playing the Japanese version and thinking you're being forced out because you've run out of air. Which personally I think it makes more sense. And we swim up. Also, what I really like is the music. It's so unsettling. I like the area itself when you get forced out, or uh, if you're kind of uh, not scared but intimidated by the whole place shoving you out like that. Okay, now that we've done that, we're going to go back to the western entrance and we're going to be staying here for the rest of the uh, uh, rest of the ruins exploration. Staying in this ruin 
drop in point, that is. The sound reverberates, and now, remember when I said this is on a step limit? Well, in order to open an entrance to the next floor, you're required to get to the pillar, that, the pink pillar that I pointed out earlier, in 190 steps or less, as far as I can tell. So, you simply follow this path. This is the uh, one path I've actually tried and tested. <laughs> I never wanted to uh, test on myself. You get here in 190 or less steps. And there you go, the wall moved and you can proceed to the next floor. Yes, I will proceed. So, on the second floor, it's smaller, but not as intimidating. Uh, and not as intimidating. First here is Relic Copper. Red of Copper is the worth the least amount of money of all the treasures. Uh, um, by the way, the plates, uh, all the plates that you can find in here, uh, actually, there are something like 17 plates in all, and you can find 14 in here, and all 14 are on the first floor, so you don't have to worry about finding plates on the second, third, or fourth floors. The other two are actually on Route 13, and uh, I'll be showing that in my walkthrough uh, in the next part, actually, when we will be exploring Route 13, but regardless, we're going to continue exploring the Abyssal Ruins here. Moving on to this, this is about the east side of the map here. Relic Band, which you can only find from Route uh, 2 onwards, along with the Relic Vases, I think. I think that's a... yeah. I think the Relic Vases are on this floor anyway. Yeah, I have a feeling we're going to be forced out pretty soon. Relic gold. Eh, about the third most worth, uh, third least worth, I think. But every piece of treasure here is valuable, so... You definitely want to sell it off, because you, you get a lot of money for it. And we're close to being forced out. The dull sound is close, that's the third warning. And you get like 50 steps or something. Maybe like 30, 40. Something like 40 or 50. And... We're getting forced out. Okay, then, I'll see you back around here. And we're back. I bet that music's gonna sound really strange sped up. <laughs> Okay, moving on from where we got forced out. As you can see, you get the second message much quicker now. Well, it seems much quicker, but... Yeah. Relic Vase here. On this... another fork, jeez. Well, a fork with two prongs. Whatever you want to call it. And Relic Gold, which is the last piece of treasure on this floor. So you can feel free to... Go down here to the pillar where the next, uh, which leads to the next floor. Now let's pillar here. It's not on a step limit. Instead, remember I said you needed a Pokemon with Flash. Well, this is your time to use it. Use Flash right by this pillar, which I'll have Aragog here use my Galvantula. The wall moved, and you can proceed. I think there was a different text below than early. Anyway, from here you get to choose two paths: the top or bottom one. To start with, I'm going to choose the top. Path. And we're going to start off by getting this treasure right by the entrance. A relic vase. Again, every piece of treasure is valuable, so be sure to pick it all up. You get lots of money. Oh, third message. Gonna better get as much treasure as you can. And a relic statue. Relic statues are the second most valuable piece of treasure in here. And the most valuable treasure is, there's only one of them, and it's on the very top floor. Relic Vars, and I think that's the last one we're going to get. Yeah. Oh, so close. Alright, I'll see you at the end of the second floor. Alright, so now we're here at the end of the second floor. I wanted to meet you back here because I wanted to show you the awesome flash animation. No, I didn't. Flash animation? <laughs> That's funny. 
That wasn't. That was rather unintentional. Okay, so, uh, so <laughs> move the pillar out of the way, and I want to start from the bottom side, just so <laughs> you could see where to enter in case you were stupid or something. No, I don't think you're stupid. Okay, start with uh, this. Should be the uh, last drop in, the last dive. If I'm unless I'm rather unlucky. Relic right, like band there, right by the entrance. And pick up some relic gold. Not much treasure left at all. As I said, this is the last uh, dive, so... Relic silver. This floor is actually uh, symmetrical, with the uh, line of symmetry being horizontal down the middle. If you actually check the map and see that. Relic band, and now we're going to get that last piece of treasure we missed out on before. And we've got our last warning, but this should be enough time. Or enough steps. Uh... <laughs> The shortest, as far as I can tell, uh, if you want to get all the treasure and get to the top, the shortest you can do this in is seven trips, which is what uh, this guide has been, seven tri seven dive trips. So yeah. And to move this pillar, you use strength, as you've just seen. And be sure to preserve as many steps as you can, because you can be one step too short. And here we are on the last floor, and right in the middle is the Relic Crown, the most valuable piece of treasure down here. And now, we wait. We pace. And we've got to turn into water. That was, that was close. That was something like 10 steps or something from not being able to get it. Okay, so we've completely explored the Abyssal Ruins. But now with all our stuff, you might be wondering, what the hell do we do with it? I shall show you. Basically, or just complexly, whatever you want to think about it. Go back to Undella Town. You could fly back if you want to be fast about it, but either ways. Go to the mansion on the west side of the town. And go down the stairs to the west and talk to this black belt. As you can see, I'm an ultra Mitch billionaire. Mitch billionaire? Pfft, this outfit is ultra expensive and rare. Oh gee. Can you see it? Can you? Uh, uh, no. You just look like any other black belt. Anyways, so he's grabbed an attention to our relic crown. He wants to sell us for 300,000 poke dollars. That's a lot of money, but we've got more treasure than that, so let's get cracking. And I'm going to sift all through all these treasures, because there's a lot to sell, and it can literally take five minutes to go through it all. So first of all, relic copper. Each one sells for 1,000 poke dollars, coming to a total of 6,000 poke dollars total. Because there's six relic coppers in the Abyssal Ruins. The relic silvers, there's six of them, and each one is worth 5,000 Poké Dollars, worth a total of 30,000 Poké Dollars. Next on my list, well, on my menu, is the relic statues, which sell for 200,000 Poké Dollars. And there's three of them, coming to a total of 60,000 Poké Dollars. Next on the menu is Relic Gold, which sell for 10,000 Poké Dollars apiece, and with seven of them, that comes to a total of 70,000 Poké Dollars. Next on the list is Relic Vase, which are worth 50,000 apiece, and there are four of them, coming to a total of 200,000 Poké Dollars. And last but not least, we've got the Relic Bands, which sell for a hundred thousand poke dollars a uh, band. Which there's five of them, so that comes to a total of five hundred thousand poke dollars. And here is our grand total that I've got now. The grand total for selling all the treasure from the Abyssal Ruins comes to a whopping one million seven hundred and six thousand poke dollars. Jeez, I'm rolling it. Look at me. I'm just walking now because the money is so much. It's so heavy. Oh, I'm rolling in it. And you're pretty much set for life. So, uh, thank you for watching this guide to the Abyssal Ruins, and I'll see you next time. Cheerio!